Green Blossom is the name. I know it sounds unbelievable, but that's my name. Uh, there I am, right there, sound asleep under the blueprint. I, I suppose that looks like a fantastic sleeping arrangement, but actually the explanation is absurdly simple. It's uh, what happens when you're too nice to people, or in this case, to kittens. Well, to a kitten. The kitten's name is Geraldine. And as usual, she was waiting for me at the front door when I got to work yesterday morning. Good morning, Geraldine. Hope I didn't keep you waiting. Your, uh... Your mother couldn't make it, eh? <laughs> well, that's her tough luck. She doesn't know what she's missing. Uh-huh. All right, just a second, just a second now. Ah, 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 just a minute. She's over here for Julie. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. She doesn't know what she's missing. Now, I've got a surprise for you. This way, here. <laughs> Look. Sardines. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy these. They're delicious. I, I had some for dinner last night. They're imported, too. Quite a bargain. Uh, three cases for $1.69. <laughs> hmm. What a delicious bouquet. Now, you gotta finish all this before Mr. Thackeray gets back. He hates animals, you know. Of course, it's nothing personal, just an allergy. You should hear him. <laughs> Be blossom. This has got to stop. We're running a business here, not a menagerie. <laughs> this is a final warning. If I catch you with any more of your furry friends in this office, I'd suggest you get a job in a pet shop. Good morning, Billy. Good morning. Uh, Geraldine and I were just playing. I was pretending I was Mrs. Thackeray, and uh, Geraldine was pretending she was me. Bob, I understand what you were doing, but could you ever explain it to Mr. Thackeray? Oh, sure. I'll just say, Mr. Thackeray, uh, Geraldine, uh, Judy, you suppose I could get a job in a pet shop? Well, if I were you, I'd get that kitten out of here. And right now. Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, Geraldine, come on. Look, we gotta hurry. Oh, I suppose you've got time. Mr. Thackeray isn't due. Holy smoke, he's two minutes late. Mr. Thackeray. Uh, Geraldine, look. I've got to find some way to sneak you out of here. <laughs> oh, Kitty. Kitty, don't, don't, don't go in there. <laughs> Kitty, where are you? Geraldine. Geraldine. Charlie, where? That allergy. Maybe if I... Uh, I... Say, combination. Good morning, Julie. Morning, Mr. Thackeray. Coffee will be ready in a minute. So you can breathe. Morning, Mr. Thackeray. Good morning. We seem to be just a little late this morning, don't we? Yes. As a matter of fact, I uh, I got to bed late last night, and then this morning the alarm seemed to be part of the dream, and I. Wait a minute. Why am I making excuses to you? Oh, it doesn't mean anything to me if you're late. And matter of fact, I don't care if you don't come at all. <laughs> well, I, I, I worry about you. That's all. <laughs> Awesome. What in the world have you been doing to my office? I'm just straightening out a bit, sir. I'll be through in a minute. But, but Robert, leave everything alone and go. I have work to do. Oh, thank you, Julie. Robert, Julie has work to do. I have work to do. And I'm quite positive that you have work to do. Now, why don't you go and do it? Well, I'm sorry, sir. I thought you'd like a little small talk with your coffee. Goodbye, Robert. Yes, sir. Well, looks like another busy, busy day. There goes the most unforgettable character I've ever met. Bob means well, Mr. Thackeray. You just wait and see. He'll end up as one of your best salesmen. Well, you're certainly his best salesman. <laughs> well, let's get started. Now, we'll need the uh, Bowman folder out of my file. You know, as a matter of fact, I sort of like him. There are days when I hate myself for it, but I like him. 
Bowman and Sons, gentlemen. In regard to the parcel of property adjacent to the refinery, may I say that I disagree with you entirely. You have placed me in a completely untenable position. <laughs> Geraldine's mother. Scat! Uh, where was I, Julie? In a completely untenable position. Oh, yes, of course. According to your contract, your option to buy the adjacent property was contingent upon the feasibility. <laughs> Why can't Bean Blossom keep his friends away from the office? The feasibility of convincing the refinery firm that they should release to you the property at present being used for a parking lot. The condition of selling the parking lot is contingent upon getting a permit from the police department. <laughs> I think I can use an aspirin. <laughs> hey, good morning, Miss Thackeray. Bob boy. Uh, why don't you join your furry friends out in the alley? Mm, my furry friends, sir? Yes. Uh, you wouldn't by any chance be holding one of them captive in the office. You know my allergy. <laughs> I wouldn't think of doing a thing like that. I mean, I wouldn't think of denying it. <laughs> Excuse me, darling. <clears throat> Sit down, good boy. Well, oh, thank you, Mr. Thacker. You, uh, care for a cigarette? Thank you. Light? Please. Now, Robert, normally in a situation like this, what would I do? I'd get furious, lose my temper, and fire you. Correct? Uh, yes, sir, that's what you've done up till now. Mm -hmm. This time, I have a different idea. I am going to have a little heart-to-heart -heart talk with you. <clears throat> now, my boy, let's look at the facts. Because you were a softy about a kitten, you almost lost your job. The world is a jungle, Bean Blossom. It's dog-eat-dog. -dog. Survival of the fittest. To be a success, a man must be a tiger. <laughs> Where are you? What are you doing down there? Oh, uh, ex excuse me, sir. I, I thought there for a minute you were going to, uh, demonstrate. Oh, Robert, sometimes I... Mr. Thackeray, you don't have to say any more. I thank you for your advice, and from now on, you're going to see a new bee blossom. Good boy. Uh... <laughs> Well, don't just stand there. What happened? Julie, you better watch Mr. Thackeray today. He's pretty diabolical. Oh, Bob. Well, he is. He's got a new sneaky approach. Sort of friendly. You mean he didn't even threaten to fire you? No. Tell me what the business world was like. Jungle full of brutal, ruthless men. Like Mr. Thackeray, I guess. Dogs eating dogs. Survival of the fittest. Tigers all over the place. Bob. Maybe he was exaggerating, but for once, Mr. Thackeray's right. You need more drive and ambition. Don't you want to have a successful career and a home and, and a wife and children? C couldn't I just be a bachelor tiger? Oh, yes, Bean Blossom, I give up. Mr. Thackeray shouldn't have wasted his time. You don't have any backbone or ambition or drive or anything. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Marshall, for your candid observations of my character. It's nice to know I work in an organization where I'm appreciated by one and all. Well, anyway, Robert S. Bean Blossom, I like you. You're kind. You're considerate. And you're lovable. Look at those soft, sensitive, blue eyes, that friendly little smile that plays over your lips. Bean Blossom, go back to that mirror. Look at those shifty eyes, that weak, petulant chin. 
Ace it, Bean Blossom. You haven't got the courage to become a cold, ruthless businessman. You'll never be a tiger. I could if I wanted to. No, you couldn't, Bob. You're hopeless. You'll never be a tiger. Never. Never! Yes, you can, Bean Blossom. You can be a tiger. Now go on. Show them. Yes, I did it. I changed from a bean blossom to a tiger. Where's Thackeray? What? He went out for the day. Okay, Miss Marshall, where's that list of past due accounts? Here it is. Just came from the auditor in today's mail. I'm going out and collect every single cent that anybody owes us. With interest. Bob, what's come over you? I'll give you a little hint. I'm having four pounds of raw meat for lunch. past you in the rent. He'll pay up every dime or out he goes. We'll just give you a little fresh air. There you are, Myrtle. Hmm? Oh, I'm just going to get some lemon for the tea. I won't be long. No. Hey, Sullivan! Hey, Sullivan! See me coming and slip down. I'll be waiting for him when he gets back. Sullivan! So, you ain't Sullivan, huh? Well, brother, you may be big and tough, but you've got me to deal with. <laughs> Tiger Bean Blossom. See these? Eviction papers. Pay up or out you go. And none of your sad stories, buddy, I've heard them. No one puts anything over on cold, calculating, ruthless. Are you looking for me, young man? <laughs> I'm Henrietta Sullivan. You're, you're H. Sullivan? You're a little old lady. Well, I, I'm 65 years old today. Do you mind if I sit down? Well, young man, are you feeling better? My name is Bean Blossom. Robert S. Bean Blossom. And uh, it's my duty, well, it is my duty exactly. Uh, it's my business. No, it is my business. I, I work for the business. What's the matter? It's no use, Mr. Bean Blossom. I know why you're here. Oh, you do? From the way you're acting, I'd say you had some sort of a, a surprise for me. A surprise? For my birthday. Your birthday. Oh, yes, of course. Your birthday. That, that's why I'm here. I, uh, yes, see, I, I, I have a telegram for you. Isn't that nice? May I have it? Oh, no, no, no. Not, not, not one of these, no. This is a, uh, this is a singing telegram, see. 
Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> oh, go ahead. I, I'm so excited. Go ahead and what? Go ahead and sing it. Oh, yes. Uh, well, um... I'm... You have a fine voice. I'm here to sing a happy song. I'm here to sing a tune. I'm here to make your birthday bright. Sweet old Mrs. Sullivan. Uh, Salavoon. <laughs> That's French pronunciation, say. Oh, thank you, young man. You sang that beautifully. Well, I should have brought my pitch pipe. You sent it? Sent what? The telegram. Oh, yes, the telegram. My, you do have a logical mind, don't you? Uh, I tell you, tell you what, let's make a guessing game out of it. You, uh, you, you guess. Oh, I, I couldn't begin to guess. Good, you're getting warm. <laughs> the only people I know are the ones who live in this bungalow court. That's it. All the bungalows got together and sent you the telegram. Well, I mean, the people who live in the bungalow, see, they, they all chipped in. My gracious, what a lovely, lovely thought. Yes, it was. I, I only wish Samuel were here. Oh, well, he chipped in, too. <laughs> Dear, sweet Samuel. He's been gone now for over 20 years. I'm afraid I'll have to be going, Mrs. Sullivan. So soon? Well, I have a very, very busy day ahead of me. See, I've got three birthdays, a couple of anniversaries, and uh, the, the grand opening of a new, uh, uh, new donut shop. I get out this way once in a while. I'll, I'll drop by. Thanks again. Goodbye. Mr. Bean Blossom, you dropped your telegrams. That, that isn't a telegram. That's a court order for my eviction. You're not a Western Union boy at all. Miss Sullivan, I work for the factory realty company. You're behind in your rent. But as far as these papers are concerned... Oh, oh no, you mustn't do that. You have to evict me. That, that's the law. I'm not going to do it. Now, Mr. Bean Blossom, whatever way is that to talk? You'll never be a success in business if you act like a softy. What was that again? The business world is a jungle. It's dog-eat-dog, dog, survival of the fittest. You mean a man has to be a... a tiger? That's right, a beast of the jungle. I won't do it. You know what'll happen to you if you don't put me out? You'll be fired. I don't care. Mr. Bean Blossom, put out your arm like this. Now say, Mrs. Sullivan. Mrs. Sullivan? Go. No. Please. Mrs. Sullivan. Go. That's the way you see you can be a tiger. It's no use. I'm not going to be a tiger. I don't want to be a tiger. Mr. Bean Blossom. Believe me, you'll be doing me a favor. This apartment's too big for me. I, I really can't afford it. I've been planning to move for a long time. Well, where will you go? Oh, I'll, I'll find some place. And I know just the spot. A wonderful little kitchenette apartment, very inexpensive, and you can move right in. It's vacant? Oh, practically, just three cases of sardines in the closet. Well, <laughs> come on, let's pack the things you need for the moment, huh? Well, I, I wouldn't leave without Samuel. Don't you worry, I'll get Samuel. <laughs> Myrtle, are you sure it's convenient to move right in? Oh, sure, I can have the things out in five minutes. Oh, it's your home. No, Mr. Bean Blossom, I couldn't. No, no, please. Don't, don't give it another thought. I'm moving into a brand new bachelor apartment. Very lush, very swanky, but very, very cozy. <laughs> Good night, Tiger. I was afraid of that.
Morning, Julie. Morning, Mr. Tanner. Lovely day. Anything interesting in the mail today? Well, the usual. Mm -hmm. uh, Mason Holding. I suppose it's another notice on that overdue Sullivan rental. Yes, that's what it is. Well, Julie, make out my personal check, cover that, mail it today. Yes, sir. Oh, and Julie, if you ever tell anyone what I've done... I understand, Mr. Thackeray. The business world is a jungle. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Julie, Mr. Thackeray. Morning, Bob. Morning, Robert. I uh, think you forgot to tie your shoelaces. Oh, did I? <laughs> yes. I must have left my shoes in the office last night. Excuse me. Why go this way again? I... <laughs> Yesterday he was a cat pied piper. Today he's Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> Where will it all end? Well, Mr. Dagger, you'll be happy to know that I profited by your advice yesterday. Mm -hmm. I started out by evicting the worst case on our overdue list. An old woman eight months past due in her rent. An old woman? Eight months past due? That's right, I got a court order through right out on the street, bag and baggage. You evicted Mrs. Henrietta Sullivan? Out she went. Bean Blossom, you're despicable. Thank you, sir. It's the most brutal thing I ever heard. That's of. me, cold, brutal Bean Blossom. <laughs> Throwing an old lady out on the street. Oh, I knew you'd be proud of me, Mr. Thackeray. I finally made the grade, huh? Bean Blossom, get out of this office. I never want to see you again. What's the matter? Did I do something wrong? Wrong? Yes, Robert. And to show you how wrong, I just sent off my personal check this morning to cover Mrs. Sullivan's back rent. But, but yesterday you said... And Julie, you... <laughs> oh, Mr. Thackeray. I've got a confession to make. I didn't throw Mrs. Sullivan out. I let her have my apartment. That's where she slept last night. If you don't believe me, you can call her up. That won't be necessary. Mrs. Sullivan. What are you doing here? Well, I'm afraid I've got bad news, Mr. Bean Blossom. It seems you forgot to pay your rent last month. And I've just been evicted from your apartment. <laughs> My hero. My turn first. My tiger. Mm -hmm. 